Hello, and welcome to Notes 9. I'm David Leedy. Episode 33, Intro to Remote Services in X Pages. Hello, Service Site JavaScript, anyone there? Okay, today uh, we're going to have another guest speaker on. Uh, don't worry, I, I've got my own stuff coming. Uh, I, I've just been kind of busy. Uh, but I'm, I'm very happy to welcome back uh, John Jardine from Ukavuma Solutions. Um, and he's uh, in South Africa and a, a very good XPages developer. And what he's going to do is he's going to talk about using the extension libraries. Um, there's like a little widget in there, I guess, for remote services. And that's a way to uh, connect your your uh, client-side JavaScript to server-side JavaScript. So with that said, let's go to the demo. Hi everyone and welcome to this video. My name is John Jardine from Ukavuma and I'll be showing you how to use a remote service in your X page. You'll need notes in Domino version 852 and you'll also need the 852 X pages extension library which you can download from openntf.org. So let's begin. Just a quick overview of the remote service, also known as a JSON remote procedure call. This is a control that you can find in the XPages extension library and it allows your client-side JavaScript to communicate with the server. It does this by referencing server-side JavaScript methods which you will create in the remote service. For example today I've got a very standard XPage called XRemote Service and on it I've got the remote service which I dragged from this extension library section here. I put it on the top of the XPage I then also added a edit box control and a button which will initiate some client-side JavaScript. And I'll take you through these three steps now. Step one is the refreshing of the, not radio group, but input control. And what this, the reason why we do this is because we're going to connect to this edit box control via server-side JavaScript, we have to refresh the value that gets entered in this edit box control so that we can access it via the server and this is the code that will make that happen you'll also notice here that i'm using an id binding expression which is what is needed when working with client-side javascript so the second step is where we're going to initiate the method that we will create in the remote service this is the method that will run the server-side javascript code which will add and this server-side JavaScript code will go and fetch the value from the edit box control. The third step allows us to return the value that's generated from the server-side JavaScript. So in other words, if the server-side JavaScript goes and fetches a value from this edit box control, this step here will allow us to go and fetch that value and use it in our client-side JavaScript. All right. So to get to the method, in order to... In order to reference this method that we're going to create, we first need to get a handle on the remote service. And we do this by providing the remote service with a service name. If you go to the properties of the remote service, you'll see that there is a property called service name. And we'll call it my RPC. Okay. So if we go back to the button, you'll see that we'll say var my object is equal to my RPC. So that's the service. Now we're going to create a method in this remote service and we're going to call the method return value. So it will look something like this when running the code in client side JavaScript return value. Okay. So I'm going to copy this value because I'm going to go and create this method now in the remote service. So if I click on remote service, go to the properties, you'll see that there's a method section. I'm going to go and add a new method. The name of the method, I'm going to paste the value that I added in the client side JavaScript. So the name of the method is return value. And now you can see what we're doing in our client side JavaScript. We're saying my RPC dot return value. By calling this, we can now go initiate the server side JavaScript that will be called. Well, not initiate. We're going to now go and create the server side JavaScript. Sorry for that. All right. So if you see on the script section over here, if you click there, you've got this launch external property editor. You'll use this to go and add the server-side JavaScript. Note that you can go and choose to have a computed value over here. And unfortunately, if you go and add your server-side JavaScript here, it will not work because it will pass your server-side JavaScript in a JavaScript binding expression, 
which is not what we want. We want to pass the server-side JavaScript as is. So in order to do that, you can click on this external property editor. All right, so we're going to run a very, very simple server-side JavaScript function. And we're going to say return get component. And we're going to put the ID name, input text one. That's our edit box control dot get value. So there you go. There's our server-side JavaScript that we're going to call or that will be initiated when we call the return value method. So if I go back to our button, you'll see var my object is equal to my RPC, the service, dot return value. Now, remember what I said before, the step three here is a very standard function that we call. It's called add callback. And what we're doing is we're declaring a variable called my result. And whatever value gets generated from the server side JavaScript will be stored in this my result here. And I'm using a simple alert box in order to show you the result that gets fetched. So we can now save and preview this in the browser. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just type in hello. And if I click on this button now, I will get the message pop up that says hello. So it's really as easy as that. And it proves uh, this example is enough to show how your client side JavaScript can communicate with the server. Uh, there's one more thing that I'd like to show you. Let's say that you want to return this into a generic function. So you, you don't only want to return value from one field, but you'd like to know that you can return a value from any kind of edit box control or radio group control for that matter. Then what you'd like to do is instead of having the edit box or the edit control name hard coded yeah inside your server side JavaScript, you would want to pass it to the method as you would when you're working with normal script. So you would want to do something like this input text one. Now, the good news is this is 100% allowed because all you do yeah in your remote service is you create against this method return value, you'll create an argument. So all you do here is you add an argument and let's call that argument ID name. And I'm going to copy this value here. And now if I go to the server side JavaScript, instead of the hard coded input text one, all I do now is I replace that with the name of the argument that I created ID name. So if you take a look now, you'll see the function, the object is my RPC. The method is return value and the argument is ID name. So if we go back to the button, the object is my RPC, the method is return value, and there's, argue, there's the argument that we're passing. So if I go and save this now, and refresh this page, I can now go and say testing argument. And if I click yeah, here we go. I hope this has been valuable to everyone, and I hope this is, this is easy enough for everyone to go and build their own uh, methods inside the remote service. Uh, so until next time, keep on coding and thank you very much. And that's the demo. Thanks a lot, John. I really appreciate that. And if anyone has any questions for me, here's my contact information. And I thank you for your time.